Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Good Morning Revolution, I should say, <laughs> and welcome to our Good Morning Revolution show, recently changed from this week with the Communist Party. And uh, you're still promising big, us that Langston Hughes poem, Joe. When, when are we going to get that? Big results this week. Uh, you'll get it when it gets ready. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. Like, like counting right. the votes. It's done right. when it's We're done. Counting the votes, right. We're still <laughs> memorizing the lines as, as well. Rosanna, hello. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Good, good, good. And Anita? Hello, everybody. Good morning. And Michael? I'm doing good. I couldn't sleep last night, but I woke up with an adrenaline shot when I saw Trump was losing in the state. Joy come up, in, come up in the morning, they say, and Scott is... <laughs> Filled with piss and vinegar this morning because his homeboy, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Biden, appears to be in the lead in uh, the great states of Pennsylvania and uh, uh, Georgia. Georgia. Georgia's in the house. You know, uh, Anita, that's a big thing, Georgia. I know. It's unbelievable. Well, and the, and the, uh, the Senate runoffs will be very interesting. There's so much attention already. Uh, because uh, if those two Republican, I mean, uh, Democrats win in uh, their Senate races in Georgia in the runoff in January, that means uh, it, there'll be a 50-50 tie in, in the Senate. So uh, it's going to be a like hard fought race. It will yeah. be. Do we know, uh, is it possible to um, still to participate in, in uh, texting or phone banking to support either of those? Um, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think they're just gearing up, you know, big time for that kind of thing. I, I can see interest all over because we're all we're all in the, the election mode right now. And we're, I think people are ready to just carry it right through to uh, to January. Lindsey Graham made a comment last night about um, liberals in New York pouring money into South Carolina. I think we'll see that for Georgia, but it's also going to be the conservatives around. Like Everyone's going to be pouring money into Georgia and, you know, putting uh uh parachute you know troopers on the ground there so yeah. we'll see and, and Rosana, we got to recognize speaking Rosana, of Georgia. Rosana, uh, california big big uh turnout how do the, how do things look out there well, What's your... i was looking at the numbers yesterday last night and if i read them correctly california's turnout was actually lower than 2016. Lower. Hmm, interesting. Wow. It went for Biden by 65%, but some of the measures that really helped working people went, you know, were defeated or they won, but it's not really, you know, like the gig workers, the app workers, uh, the, which includes the delivery drivers and Uber drivers uh, lost. And so it, 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 it did away with a law that had already been passed by the legislatures to to um, to provide you know benefits for the app workers, and so um, that that's really disappointing. Um, Interesting. One, th one thing that did win was to have uh, to allow uh, formerly incarcerated felons to be able to vote uh, okay. once they've been released from prison. So uh, they couldn't previously vote in California. They they could they they could vote I believe if after their complete time is served, and I believe this one says if you're as long as you're out of prison you can okay. vote, as opposed to like maybe you're still on parole, right. mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. I I believe that's that's hmm. correct. But one uh, of my distinct memories is um, I think I said it before. Uh, during our discussions, and that is that when I was doing a petition gathering for Gus and Angela and Gus and Jarvis back in the 70s, mm -hmm. met a lot of guys in, in Compton and South Central uh, on the street, you would ask them if they would sign and they would say, I'm not a citizen, you know? Mm -hmm. These are African-American men, I'm not a citizen. I'm not, and it, and it, 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 it dawned on me after a moment that what they were saying was that they had done time and that they were unable to vote. Um, I guess they changed the law since uh, then, but that was the that was there, and that's an issue that is at stake, Scott, in the attempt by Trump to say stop counting the vote in Georgia. 
in Atlanta. Absolutely. Stop counting it in Philadelphia. Stop yeah. counting it in Detroit. You qualified it uh, the other day as the, you know, the biggest attack on, on voting rights uh, since the overthrow of Reconstruction. And I, I think you're right. Also, I really like that way of framing it. That, like when, when someone is deprived of their right to vote, when their vote is suppressed, it's, it's like taking away someone's citizenship. It's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I, I think we, sh we, you know, we should bring that out. Because um, this is a, it's a hugely undemocratic um, tactic that, that Trump is trying. And that is what has uh, always been a current in the African-American uh, experience was this notion of being apart and yet separate from the body politic of this country because of the history of racism and slavery and so on and so forth. And it extends to everybody else. And that's why when Trump and then says, go back home to AOC and go back home to uh, the uh, yeah, Omar. Omar, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, in the back of that is the idea, you're not really American. Right. You know, say these people whose grandfathers came here from Europe and committed genocide against the Native American people. They want to tell, they want to tell somebody to go back. They have so much nerve. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, so um, this election was very close, Michael. Yeah, it is. and. You know, I think we have to also confront the racism that we're seeing. It's very sly. Um, you see it a little bit in, in these kind of defense, the right wing defense of the Electoral College as all this is happening. And it's kind of the, oh, well, why is it up to Philadelphia and Atlanta and Detroit? Why is it up to that? And that is rooted in racism. We know that these votes coming, you know, are people um, of color who believe in science, they stayed home and s mailed in their ballots, unlike Trump who said, don't mail in your ballots, you know, go in person because the pandemic's not a big deal. Um, so and you're so, saying that the, that the election was close because Trump's appeal to racism worked? Um, I'm not sure that it was his appeal to racism. I think we have to have a really good analysis of what happened, because I'm from Ohio, like you. I think we have to have a really good analysis of what happened in these rural red counties who went, in many cases, stronger for, for Trump than before. Because a lot of people, you know, weren't um, looking at his, uh, they weren't hearing his rhetoric. You know, I remember I asked someone, I asked a Trump supporter, what do you think of him injecting, you know, trying to inject ourselves with bleach? That's what he said. Uh, and they said, oh, I didn't see that, I, you know? And so we have to really do an analysis of why so many people came out for Trump. You know, many of us were expecting a landslide. I don't know if I was expecting a landslide, but I certainly wasn't expecting it to be so close, not after everything that's happened. Well, let's talk about a little bit about that, Anita. Why was it so, I mean, it really wasn't close in Ohio. Right. Democracy got its butt whooped. I mean, I know you were saying that it was going to be 50-50, and I kept arguing with you. And then you wrote me all those mean letters saying that I was wrong. <laughs> and, but it, 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 it wasn't close. Anita, it was seven points. No, it was How eight. I happen? thought it was eight points. And maybe it is going to be seven points when they count all the, um, because Ohio keeps counting and keeps receiving uh, those absentee ballots. But I think um, I, I had a long talk with my my comrade this morning about um, about the the situation in Ohio, and, and we, we, we have a real crisis, a kind of a, a hinterland uh, kind of situation where those, those towns where steel mills close really are still decimated and the, the, the Democratic Party hasn't gotten it back on its feet. We have a, a robust labor movement, but the labor movement is dominated by, uh, by not the old industrial labor unions anymore, but rather UFCW, United Food and Commercial Workers, um, uh, AFSCME um, and, um, and SEIU, who are doing great work and did great work in Ohio, but um, don't have the history of, of, um, of struggle that those industrial unions have. But, but we really need to rebuild the labor movement in Ohio and rebuild um, those areas where, uh, where you know, co corporations just left people hanging and, and decimated communities. So the reason that the uh, polls were off was because the labor unions have composition has changed. Is, is that what you're saying? Well, I think the, the reason the, the polls were off was because polls 
often have um, just are interested in people who they see as likely voters. And one of the things we learned just a couple of weeks before the election is that the GOP this year really did a, um, a serious targeted uh, search for their new voters and registered large numbers of voters. And a lot of new voters voted in Ohio this year and, uh, and a, a higher proportion of them voted for Trump. So they really were able to um, you know, increase uh, the, their, uh, the voter, voting capacity of their base. Uh, so more than more than the other side did. So I think that's that doesn't explain what happened in Youngstown and in uh, Bourne, Ohio, where for the first time since 1972, Anita, yeah, the Republican. That was Nixon versus McGovern. Nixon versus McGovern, 1972. Last time the GOP won in Youngstown, Ohio, and this time they got a majority of the vote. That's crazy. For God's I, sake. You know, and, yeah. and, and the funny thing about it um, is that Tim Ryan won easily. He's the member of Congress. Mm -hmm. And right. the, 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 the senator um, uh, won, wins easily uh, mm -hmm. from Ohio. Uh, what's his name? Sherry Our Brown. Senator Sherry, senator. Brown. Sherry Brown. Right. But the national goddamn Democratic ticket gets his butt whooped. Mm -hmm. Rosanna, is, is, <laughs> what's going on in this country that, 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 that the local Democrats can win, but the national ticket is, is getting, you know, hammered in certain places around the country. Not all over, but in certain places around the country. What do you think? I think it's in the battle of ideas. You know, people are confused. They, they, uh, they trust certain certain candidates and they don't trust others. Uh, I think they're, you know, they're confused about how things are. You know, I was talking earlier about the gig workers, the, the, the uh, you know, the delivery drivers. And there was, they spent uh, close to $200 million on ads. And they featured all people of color trying to make ends meet and telling people to vote yes on this, on this uh, measure. So, you know, in, the, in what we're suffering right now with the pandemic, you want everybody to have a job, right? And so that's, and, and so the, the right is very, very tricky about how they frame things. And so I think we need to be much more uh, alert about that and much more, uh, what is it, vigilant about how we frame things and how we clarify that in fact, it's not, you know, it's, it's just made, uh, gig workers much more vulnerable. Now they won't have benefits. They're going to have to pay for their own costs. Uh, you know, the port workers here have been fighting that for quite a few years. In fact, they had won this, this battle and now it's just been reversed completely. Scott, uh, Michael told me, he said that uh, in answer to a question this morning, Somebody uh, asked him about Ohio and politics and other parts of the country. And, and Michael said, said he told him that we have a socialist moment in New York, but the national socialist moment in Ohio. Do you think that that's true? Uh, you know, I think I think we have to look at kind of along the lines of what Rosanna said. You know, we're in we're in the midst of a very, very multiple, very deep crises of capitalism, including the ongoing effects from 2008. Um, class consciousness is developing and the right is really, really clever about sort of parasitically using left um, ideas and left slogans. This this whole economic populism you know, th this appeal to the working class by, by Trump is one thing. But when I was looking at a lot of the propaganda, you know, the, the, the ads from Trump, the stuff, the memes shared by, you know, my, my conservative contacts on Facebook, um, there was a whole campaign of stuff um, based on, you know, painting Biden as racist um, to appeal to, um, to basically give, Trump's own racism a cover among people who, you know, who might be put off by white supremacy, by open white supremacy to say, well, actually, Biden's way worse 
than Trump on racism. Biden's, I had somebody argue with me the other day that Biden was way worse on um, gay rights uh, than Trump has been. Um, so there was definitely this appeal, this, I mean, the, the right has no ideas of its own. It only has, you know, the ideas of the ruling class, but it, so it, it just, it's parasitic on, on the left, on the working class, on the democratic movement. So is it a national socialist moment? No, I think it may be. Uh, there, there, there's a fascist propaganda machine um, that needs to be dismantled. Uh, the, the battle of ideas is not equal. And when you say the appeal to the working Can class, I agree with Scott about the one thing. Class, I think the you way... mean... Go ahead, Anita. Yeah, tw trade. Um, I think um, before ar around 2014, 2015, uh, Sherrod Brown led the led the movement in Ohio against uh, trade policies, and then uh, Trump and his allies co-opted that rhetoric and went with it. And I think that is that also does uh, resonate still in the results of of the election in Ohio this time too. Uh, that they think that Trump has has given them something on on trade when it's just a, a rhetorical um, stealing of our rhetoric, basically. And I, and I think I agree, Anita. But I I think we also have to consider because Joe was asking about like the national ticket at the local level, things are looking better. And I think we have to step back and say. And I don't think you know people are saying, oh, Bernie, if Bernie would have got, Bernie would have won. I'm not so sure of that. But we have to like analyze why aren't people going and, and i'm thinking back to, i watched the republican national convention and they had many african-american representatives who were calling out kamala harris's record and joe biden's comment about if you don't vote for me you know you ain't black um and so i'm not saying that that's it um i know there's some reports about the latino votes which, which of course that's not monolithic either uh, Miami-Dade County went blue. I'm not saying that there's not a significant portion of, uh, you know, Cuban Americans who are out there uh, supporting Trump. Um, but I just think, you know, people are not analyzing politics every day like we do. And who can blame them? They're trying to survive a pandemic and an economic crisis. And so if they don't see the Democratic Party doing anything in their area, like in many parts of Ohio, you know, and and but Trump's there, make America great again. And, you know, you know, I'm not saying who can blame them. I'm not justifying that. But we have to really analyze this because I'm not saying it's a national socialist movement, <laughs> you know, but there's different factions. There's there's the socialist movement, the ideas around socialism, our party's growing, the the ideas around socialism are growing around the country, especially among amongst young workers and, and, and young students. Um, but people are out there in the millions, millions, millions voting for Trump. And I personally did not expect it. Well, Notwithstanding that, the it looks like the Democratic forces are going to win uh, because of the blue wall in the upper Midwest, in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, along with New York, East Coast Action, West Coast. That is the All People's Coalition coming together. Uh, to push back the fascist danger. Mm -hmm. uh, but Scott, I mean, um, does it mean that, that the uh, appeal to the left has floundered and that centrism should be the name of the game? And that, uh, what do you think? I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, these terms of like the, the left and, and the center for me, oh, I, was, I forgot. You don't even agree with those terms. Oh, obscure more. But so that. I think one of the things I'm going to be looking at when when we have you know actual data on the whole electorate rather than just exit polling is you know the Democrats were, were very very they placed a lot of hope in um, suburban voters, sort of upper middle class, centrist, conservative leaning, and especially suburban women. Um, and some analysis I've seen says that that you know, that may not have panned out exactly as they thought. So I want to I want to look at that. Um, uh, I don't think that, you know, repudiating the, the left and, and the democratic movement, repudiating, you know, or moving away from Black Lives Matter, moving it away from the call for community control or, or you know, s significant reform of police. Um, I, uh, away from, you know, uh, gay and trans rights. I don't think 
that that is a winning solution at all. Uh, I, I don't. Well, think Rosanna, let me ask you a question. Well, what will be a winning solution? Because a lot of people are saying this morning, well, you know, Biden was in the Senate. He was in the Senate for a long time. He knows Mitch McConnell. He's going to be able to strike deals. I even heard some of our people say that, you know, we're going to go in there and we're going to have the Green New Deal and there's going to be negotiations. <laughs> and do you think that the Republicans are going to treat Biden and Harris any different than they treated Obama and Biden? Nope. <clears throat> I think we need to be, you know, we need to learn the lessons of, you know, the, the Obama administration and how there were attempts to, to pass a lot of these things, but the right just immediately said, we're gonna do everything to stop him. They were very vocal about that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't even on the slide. It was just like, we're gonna do everything to stop him. And I think we have to keep reminding folks about some of these things as a way to help them to understand that everything, we have to look at everything deep, more deeply, not just on face value. And that's part of the battle, in my opinion, of the battle of ideas. It's uh, getting folks to look at things much more deeply uh, to, to be able to show, you know, the, to be able to understand the, the right motive, you know, in all of these things. And that what they're telling you on face value is not what's really, what they're, ask, that, what they're <laughs> after. I think that's our Good biggest point. challenge. Good point, good point. Well, we're coming to the end of our program uh, today. But one good thing about this moment is that it has pointed to the deep crisis in the country. It's not just an economic, it's a political and moral crisis. And people are looking for a more fundamental revolutionary solutions. And many of them are joining the Communist Party. We've gotten like 25, 30 a day uh, for the last, since last Saturday. And, uh, and so any of you who, uh, you know, you want to check us out, you know, come to our website, join. And uh, we welcome you. We want you. We need you. We need your contribution. Here's the lightning round. Obama's going to win in the Electoral College. Obama? Uh, Trump <laughs> will respect the decision of the Electoral College and voluntarily see seed, S-E-D-E, -E, power. Yes or no? Scott? Um, I already think he's, you know, he's refused in advance to respect the decision. Um, he's, he's already in a position of being uh, forced into compliance, even by Republicans. So I, I still maintain some hope for a, a peaceful, if messy, uh, transfer of power. So that means yes or no? Yes? You're saying yes? Y yes ish. Yes ish. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talk about liberalism. Anita, <laughs> yes or no? I, I'd say also uh, uh, yes is the uh, he's going to cede power eventually, but I think he's going to create all kinds of mischief for two and a half months and make, uh, make the country difficult to govern and, and also. Who knows what chaos will go on in the world in the next two and a half months, too. So, so you're it, agreeing with Scott, yes ish. I get yes ish. I'm part of a program <laughs> called Blackish on TV. So this issue is <laughs> kind of interesting. <laughs> Michael, yes or no? Sea power, respect the decision of the Electoral College. I think there will be, he's going to cede power. I don't want to say it's peaceful, though, because as Anita said, there's going to be all this chaos and, and protests on both sides. There's already fascists trying to shut down these counting centers. So I don't think that's peaceful. But it has been relatively stable so far. I mean, you know, which is a good thing. And we want to encourage that. Uh, Rosanna, your turn. Yes or no? No, he's going to go, he's going to be forced out you know, kicking and screaming like, you know, like a child who doesn't want to leave the playground. So, no, I don't think so. I heard Mike, he might, he might resign the day before the end of his term and allow Mike Pence to uh, give him a pardon for everything. Except for the state. A bad so. idea. True. Thank him, put a bottle in his mouth. Send him to <laughs> Miami. We don't have anybody from Florida. I mean, for Florida, they have to deal with a joker like that. Well, 
the, exile. The, 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 the struggle, friends, comrades, brothers and sisters is ongoing. You know, we have to keep the pressure on, got to keep mobilized, be vigilant, don't sleep. Uh, we're, it's, a, it's a different moment that we're dealing with and uh, we're going to have to maintain our unity and maintain our, our fighting spirit. Uh, and we're going to have to do some things differently, you know, uh, particularly in places like the Midwest in Ohio, Western PA, Michigan, uh, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Florida. I don't want to leave anybody out. Florida. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you know, we have to really take a look at what, what's going on there and the political crisis that exists, both in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. We need a we need a new party led by labor. That's what we that's that's what we need, and we need some radical reforms in order to get there. Well, but with this divided government, that's going to be down the road oh, the peace it looks like. So, uh, but nevertheless, we're going to keep fighting. Thank you. Take care. Talk to you next week. Stay same place, same station, same group of uh, communists. Uh, trying to tell her like it is, not the way we want it to be. Take care. Talk to you. Bye, later. everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.